How's it going, everyone? Maryland here, and last time I just ran for my life away from Muna. I know, Muna turned out to be evil after all. Wow, that was just, that was intense. But Broham and I got split up along the way. I wonder if he's all right. Uh, yeah, so, um, well, that's definitely something. Now I gotta get the heck out of here. And, uh... Yeah, I also ran into that, oh, what was it, the, the Perugly and Krogunk, or not Krogunk, Toxicroak from earlier, and it looks like they're after me, too. Oh, snap, they've caught up already. Yeah, so, after that whole scene, you've got to do this one on your own. That's right, you don't have anyone with you, it's just you. In this case, it's just Tusks, no bro ham. Um, I definitely recommend being prepared on items at this point. You don't need to stuff your inventory with revivor seeds just yet, but I do recommend having a few of them. You will have a chance to uh, withdraw some items just in case. Coming up pretty soon, but you're going to want standard dungeon exploring stuff. Additionally, if you have things like all power-up orbs, petrify orbs, or foe hold orbs, or even slumber orbs, those would be very helpful to have with you. Um, totter orbs will work as well. Not quite as well, to be honest, but they'll still work. Uh, let's see. I guess that looks good. Oh, very important to try to have chesto berries if you happen to have them. Just in case you fall asleep, because that can be absolutely devastating when you're on your own. Okay, I'm going to withdraw four orange berries. Uh, all dodge orbs can come in handy, too. Just kind of telling you some of the stuff you might want to be on the lookout for, uh, item-wise. Because that'll make this upcoming fight so much better. Okay, I think that's good. Let's go on ahead. Into the Daybreak Ridge! Yeah, pretty intense. Oh, hi there. How about you get out of here, you nasty monkey? Trying to burn my berries? Ah, go away already. Yeah, pretty much you're going to run into the same stuff you've been encountering um, along your adventure. That's right. Panseer, Conkelder, uh, Gotharita, which I think you could find in the last area. I don't know. Gotta watch out for them. You can find Drudigan and Dino. Um, and also Shelgan. And I think Shelgan might be new here. So, those dragon types get to be rather... Ooh, a blinker seed. Weird. Um, the dragon types can be rather frustrating because they resist fire, water, grass, and electric. So, unless you started with Axew, you might run into some problems with resistance. Just try to use other attacks, like normal type attacks, um, against them instead. Chances are you don't have any ice type attacks, but if you do, those would be awesome. Of course, if you're an Axie like me, you shouldn't have any problem dual chopping the heck out of those things. Because they are so weak to dragon. <laughs> and dual chop is so strong. Okay, so we got to make it through a few floors of this. After the fourth floor, we're going to run into... Um... Whoa! We're going to get roared away, apparently. Boom. Uh, yeah. After the fourth floor, we'll have a little bit of a break, which I'll show you in a moment. Oh, no, wrong way. Whoa. <laughs> I like how we didn't even notice each other. Get out of here. All right. And just as I told you, here's that break. So, if you didn't have Reviver Seeds in your inventory prior to this, now's a great time to withdraw them. Because you very well might need them. I'm just going to say you do have a fight coming up. And it might be a little challenging. Particularly since you're on your own. Now this is a blessing and a curse being on your own. Because on the bright side. You at least don't have to worry about your partner running off. And getting into trouble. Because it seems like you know, Pokemon have just a terrible AI in this game. And they're always getting into trouble. Regardless of what you do. I mean you can set them to follow me. But even then it's like oh well now I'm not going to help you out. When we need some help. 
Just, they're troublemakers, that's what. So, you at least don't have to worry about that. But, if you run into something like, uh, you know, the Panseer and it uses Yawn, oh, that could be just terrible. Because it could end up putting you to sleep, and then burning all of your items. I know, it's just a terrible thought, but it's quite true. And you'll be put to sleep for a few turns, and you'll have no one to save you, too. So that's why if that happens, try to use a Chesto Berry right away to prevent you from falling asleep. Or a Health Orb will work, too. Oh, why did I go down there? There was nothing there. I knew that. I could see that from the map. Okay, now, I'm not going to bother. Okay, so thankfully this is a short dungeon. There's not a lot to it at all. Um... Only six floors you have to deal with, really. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're traveling through it. Don't mind if I do. There we go. All right, so make sure you're all ready once you get to the sixth floor and you find the stairs. It's up to you if you want to go with a power band or defense scarf. Defense scarf might almost help more simply because... It's going to be a little tricky. You'll see why. But let's go on. I finally made it out of there. Whew. I'm pretty tired. But I've got to keep moving forward. Whoa. Okay, about that. I should probably stop moving forward. It's a sheer cliff and it's pretty far to the ground. I'm not sure if I can climb down from here. Maybe if I can find enough holds. Hey, fellas, game's up! Tusk is up here! Croak! Uh-oh. Croak! <laughs> we finally caught up to you, Croak! Looks like we're gonna be the ones to finish the job first, Croak! First? First? I'm first, guys. Uh, wait a second. If they're going to finish the job first, then that means they're not second, and that means they haven't caught Broham yet. If that's true, then I've got it. Look at this pose. I love this pose. It's like, come at me, bro! <laughs> Might as well give up, runt. You're going down. Right here. Right now. Croak. Uh-oh. I gotta get away no matter what. I'm going to escape too, Broham. Yeah. So, it's a three-on-one fight. You have to fight against um, the Chandelier, Toxicroak, who you already fought before, and then this Gigalith. Gigalith can hit pretty hard. Um, actually, all three of these can hit for maybe 20 to 30 damage per hit, depending on what they're using. And since all three of them can attack you at once, if you're not careful, uh, yeah, it can spell trouble. If you have any of the following, I'm just going to walk through some strategy here. Your best bet is to use a uh, either a Petrify or a Full Hold Orb, and that'll petrify everyone. And then you can just take them out one at a time. That's ideal. Otherwise, using a slumber orb might be a good idea. It puts everyone to sleep and uh, works more or less the same way. A totter orb can be used. It'll confuse all of them and they might end up hitting themselves. But it'll also distract them so they'll wander all around and stuff. The all power up orb, that's a good thing to use. Although a violent seed will work as well. Oops, there it is. In fact, I... I think that, uh, I think the Violence Seed is an even better idea, since it's just you on your own. And then, you know, pretty much the standard stuff. Reviver Seeds are very handy. Orin Berries are very handy. Alright, now that I've walked you through all of the items and stuff you can use, I'm just gonna kinda do this at a glance, I guess. Um... Staying in one place probably isn't a good idea, because Chandelure can attack you from a distance. And that thing will like to use hard. Now this is a bad move. See, now I have, like, all of them around me, so they'll all gang up on me. Rather than that, let that happen, try to move out of the way. Okay, um... Who you want to start with, as far as taking things out, it really doesn't matter, um... If you're using Axew, you can take out whoever you want. If you're starting with Snivy, you might want to get rid of that Chandelure right away, because Fire Blast will hit hard. Actually, so will, so will that thing. You can also get Gigalith out of the way just for a nice quick hit. Um, 
I guess I'll start with this Toxicroak. Actually, you know what? If Keyleth is over there, let's go ahead and start with uh, Chandelure. Keyleth likes to use Harden, which gets to be rather troublesome. Particularly if you're using physical base attacks, like I am. Boom. See, it hits hard. And you can't really outmaneuver them either. Okay, you. Whoa. Okay, so, like, if you started with, um... Oshawott or Snivy, you know, you'll have no problem with Gigalith. In fact, if you start with Oshawott, you should be in great shape for the whole fight. You can just use water attacks against both Gigalith and Chandelure, and uh, you should be able to handle Toxicroak just fine. But, you know. Alright, I gotta get down from this cliff, and I'm not feeling too good about this. It's a pretty, uh, pretty steep cliff. Grow, cow, cow, cow. Like we're gonna let you get away, Croak! S somebody anybody, can you hear me? We're up here! Tuska's up here! Uh-oh. Looks like trouble. I don't even need to say that, because you heard that roar just as well as I did. Oh, snap! Here, I thought it was my dragon for a moment there. Nope. On the bright side, it's not High Dragon. On the bad side, it's Salamence. <laughs> Good timing, Salamence. Go after that little Tusks. <laughs> yeah, I don't even need to do the voice acting for that one. <laughs> oh man, I have to take on all these things by myself. I barely have the energy to stand, and now this. Go! Croak! Drill! All right, time for some Matrix-style dodging. Whoa, can't catch me now. Woo, dodge it, yeah. Uh-oh. Well, I was doing pretty good. Oh, no. It's charging its laser. I can't get out of the way. What can I do? Oh, uh, tusks. Please duck. What? Whoa! Uh, roar. Uh, well, I was worrying about High Dragon, but this Pokemon is... We are escaping tusks. What? Ow, hey, Dragon Tail's super effective. You gotta watch it, buddy. Oh, no. Wait, I'm flying on High Dragon. What? What? Croak! Uh, yeah, that just happened. Wow. Okay, then. Guess we're gonna find out what happens in the next episode. Nah, I'm just kidding. We're gonna find out right now. What? What in the world? What happened? Yeah, good question. Where am I? That's right, I... I fell from the cliff and... And... Oh, you're awake at last. Uh-oh. Ah! <laughs> Hi, dragon! Oh, I'm sorry. Did I startle you? I, I'm sorry, but, but I definitely won't eat you, or attack you, or, or battle you, or defeat you, or crush you, or, or anything like that. No, not you, Tusks. Definitely not. I'm telling the truth. Please believe me. Uh, well, I guess I got no reason not to right about now. I mean, if I was going to be dinner, I'd have been eaten by now. I was in trouble, a dragon suddenly appeared. Then, I think he saved me when I fell from the cliff. Oh, good. It looks like you've calmed down a little, at least. I'm so relieved to see that. You were unconscious for a really long time, Tusks. Unconscious? You know, that's when you're asleep or unable to be conscious. We are now in a small cave in the valley near Mount Kilianea. I flew all the way here carrying you, Tusks. You're heavier than I expected. Honestly, I was exhausted. Just keeping the two of us in the air was tough. And then I chose the most hidden spot I could find. 
and I struggled all the way here. I did a really good job, don't you think? I would say we won't be found soon in a place like this. And you seem so very tired, Tusks. You just wouldn't wake up, you know? I was very worried. But now you're awake at last! Uh, wow. He seems really happy. He's not quite the Pokemon I thought he was, huh? Now I'm really confused. The scene I saw in my dream. Alright, instant replay, everyone. Exhibit A, Hydragon chasing Muna. That Hydragon definitely gave off a scary vibe. But this Hydragon seems polite and well-spoken. Not scary at all, really. In fact, it looks downright friendly. The vision of Hydragon chasing Muna was what started it all. Because of that vision, vision, I thought I had to go save Muna. But when I did, Muna turned around and attacked me instead. And the one who actually saved me from her was... Hydragon. I feel like everything's turned upside down. I'm ever so glad you're awake! After all, Tusks, I have wanted to meet you for such a long time. Uh... You did hear my voice, didn't you? Back in the human world. Oh, come now. You can't tell me you've forgotten already, right? My dragon's voice? In the human world? Wait a second. In the human world? Hold up. That voice was... All right, instant replay, everyone. Exhibit B. You, you who can now hear my voice, might you be a human? If you are, then please... Listen to my plea. Wait a second. That's Muna's voice. <laughs> you mean I was supposed to be hearing Hydragon this whole time? Oh man, this changes everything. Does he really mean that voice was... I always assumed it was Muna calling out to me, but it wasn't Muna after all. It was Hydragon. It appears you've remembered at last. It sure was tough, you know. And just when I thought I'd finally gotten through to you in your dream, then... Muna took control of my voice! And in the end, she went even further and showed you that terrible fake vision. She made you think I was the bad guy! My goodness, can you believe that? No, whatever would give a Pokemon that idea, that you were a bad guy. So that scene I saw, it was something Muna made up to trick me? Then that explains why... I didn't think anything of it at the time, but... Actually, I need to use my internal monologue voice. I didn't think anything of it at the time, but during that dream. Might you be, I mean, might you be a human? If you are, then please listen to my plea. I want you to save the Pokemon world. We need your, High Dragon's voice, which I now remember. Oh yeah, of course that was High Dragon's voice. Of course it was. Actually cut off at that point. And exhibit C. It seemed like there was... Oh, monologue voice. And then it seemed like there was interference for a second. Like static. So that was when Muna took over Hydragon's voice. And she was the one who... Help! That's right. Muna was the one who desperately cried out for help. And the scene that followed. That was to link it all to the image of Hydragon chasing down Muna. And... That's right! That's exactly right! It was quite convincing, wasn't it? No, wait! I mean, it was terrible of her! Absolutely rotten! Grr! And ever since you came to this world, Tusks, Muna and her friends kept getting in my way so I could never meet you. I was at my wit's end, honestly! But, thanks to this chance, I finally get to talk to you in person! I'm so glad! Oh, it really is wonderful! Uh, so the one who really wanted my help was Hydragon? Even if that's so, I still don't get it. Why did Muna hijack my dream like that, yo? Using Hydragon's voice to tell lies. She showed me that fake image and then tried to attack me. What a jerk. Ah, I see. You still don't understand, do you? Please, allow me to explain. Why I had to reach out to the human world? And why I asked for help from a human like yourself, Tusks? You see... The truth is that I, I am your father. Uh, nope, nope, that's not it. Oh, th that's Salamence. Oh, no. I'm sorry, but I must delay my explanation for the moment. Now we need to run. We have to get out of this cave. Yeah, it seems like a good idea. Oh, that was fast. 
Our enemies outnumber us by quite a lot. If we are found, it could be disastrous. I wish I could carry you and fly away, like we did from that cliff, Tusks. But I'm already exhausted after carrying you here. Forgive me, but I'm afraid I have to save my energy and not fly unless it's an absolute emergency. Please, for now, we just need to run away. On the ground, I mean. And on another, th and on another note, while I am not exactly a member of your party, my mind is still in sync with yours, Tusks. In other words, we can still manage a team attack together. I will also follow your lead when it comes to team skills and do whatever you do. Oh, does it seem odd that I can use team attacks and skills like that? Well, it's because I'm a bit different from a regular Pokemon. But explaining that will take more time than we have right now. Let's just get to safety. Hurry! Oh yeah! I got Hot Dragon on my team. What you gonna do? Level 64, what? Get that out of here. I feel pretty good about this. So I have a brutal Pokemon with Levitate. And all these fierce attacks. Oh yeah, that's so boss. Okay, I'm in business. Oh man, am I in business now. So, um, yeah. Probably don't need to worry too much about your items. Maybe. I don't know. Um, anything extra you have, you might as well deposit. But, it'd still be a good idea to keep some stuff with you. You're probably not going to need it because you have a flippin' level 64 Hydreigon on your team. But, you know, putting that aside, I think you're, you're probably good. Um, yeah, let's go ahead. We're gonna clear the Ochre Quarry. Oh, man, I hope you're not afraid of heights. <laughs> Woo, that looks like one doozy of a drop now, doesn't it? Okay, well, looks like it's one of these free-forming areas. Or not free-forming, free, uh, what do you even call it? Free-roaming, I guess you can move around. Just have to dodge Pokemon. Hey, blocking the door like that, come on. Get out of here. I got a dragon. What you gonna do about that? Okay, so just have to make your way through this place. And, uh, yeah, a dragon likes to destroy things and troll Pokemon with roar. Pretty fun, actually. It'll also crunch things, and he can just fight on his own like it's going out of style. But, I mean, he is level 64, for goodness sakes. That is pretty darn strong. Oh, yeah. So you do have to deal with these zebras. And, uh, yeah, they're kind of annoying, I guess. You have to deal with Dwebble, too. And this thing, ugh. It uses, um, what is it? Bug Bite. And that's similar to Incinerate. It just eats up your berries. So, try not to waste too much time against those things. Oh, no! I left High Dragon to do his own bidding. <laughs> well, he makes short work of just about everything, so you don't have to worry. Or at least you shouldn't. Oops. Well, this is just great. Alright, we gotta find them stairs, man. I bet it's in that bottom room. What do you think? Yeah, that one right there that I was starting to go... Yep, I knew it! I knew it! I was starting to go there, and then... Nope, not gonna happen. Whoa! Alright, so there are these seismitoads just kind of passed out on the ground. They are the resident boss monster around here. So, uh, you know, probably not a good idea to wake them up. But you do have high dragons, so I guess you could probably try it at this point. I don't know if I'm feeling that that bold. Wait, do I have a pure seed? Oh. I could always just throw a warp seed at him. Hey! Cut that out. Yeah, so these seem strike a you know, they're they're kinda I don't even know what to say really. They do hit moderately hard. Whoa! 
<laughs> oh man, blew them away. Oh, these Amoongus. Okay, let me tell you about these Amoongus. They are frustrating. Um, they can use Toxic on you. When you hit them, Effect Spore can trigger. And they're just all around jerks. So watch out for them, will ya? They also tend to have a lot of hit points, too. Okay, so it looks like we're at one of these big old crossings. I guess we should cross it, huh? What do you think? Yeah, just don't fall. Woo. No, you don't have to worry about falling. I was just kidding about that. All right, now we're at the sixth floor. As you can see, it goes pretty quickly. It's not that bad. Oh, someone's behind us. Hey, how about you take care of that thing with your dragon breath? You will learn to love that dragon breath, because it just seems like he uses it, and he can hit from a mile away with that thing. It's so great. It can hit up to ten squares away. That's awesome. It's like, oh yeah, I'm just going to stand back and take him out before he even have a chance to do anything. Alright, I like that strategy. <laughs> Yes, I do. Ooh. Slow orb. This poor orb, it's so slow. Alright, take that thing out. Yeah, Roar is... It's a weird move, but it can be surprisingly helpful at times. Just gets things out of the way. So nice. Sometimes you just want things out of the way. So you can then team up on them or something. Since there are so many corridors in this game. Oh, I just have this feeling it. Nope. All right. And yeah, the music is kind of interesting in here. It reminds me of something. It's like they use, I don't know. They, they use music from something in here. I just can't put my finger on what at the moment. I think it's like a Mystery Dungeon 1 dungeon. Look at that! I mean, he just shoots Dragon Breath at everything. It's like, what do you even do? Oh, these Amoongus, they like to use growth, too. And that's just... Ugh. It can be very frustrating if you happen to, uh... You know, fall asleep, and then they just use growth like 5,000 times. Alright, you know what? We're gonna try fight this thing. Hopefully this doesn't end up to be a mistake. Oh. All right, looks like we can take him out no problem now. Oh yeah, Tusk wants to learn a new move, Dragon Claw. Woo. Although it's actually really underwhelming compared to Dual Chop. <laughs> so there's probably no need for it. Although, I guess there's no reason to have Slash. What does that even do? I'll get rid of Slash. Alright, well that's nice. Good to know I can fight those Seismitoads. Here I thought they were really tough, but... I guess we're getting on the right level to fight stuff like that. Why does this music sound so familiar? I just, I can't put my finger on it. It's just, oh man, it's not like the entire song. It's just this part. Like, what is that? Boom. Lazy Toad. Okay, moving right along. We're a team of dragons, like do dragon things like use dragon claw and use it again and use dragon breath whoa oh wow there's just a lot of glitter around this guy hey I'm fine with that slumber orb don't think that's necessary right now <laughs> boom <laughs> there were two slumber orbs right next to that Passed out Seismitoad. That's pretty great. I think he's been getting into them slumber orbs, if you know what I mean. Alright, got a zebra to deal with. Boom. 
Rawr. Hey, whatever, man. <laughs> we'll just shoot dragon breath at you. Because we are dragons. Mighty, mighty dragons. All right, you're going down, buddy. Boom. Oh, dual chop. How awesome. Ooh, reviver seed. I gotta find that Dwebble. <laughs> I could go for a free Reviver Seed. But let's wake this Toad thing up first. What do you say? Ah. Let's see it try to do something. Well, it didn't hurt that bad at all. Okay. Boom. Boom! Ooh. Yeah! Free Reviver Seed for the win, baby! Yeah! That's awesome. Oh, don't you dare. Get that out of here! Come on, go away, you dwell. Look at how useful High Dragon is. I mean, he's just so awesome. Oh my goodness. Alright, where... Ooh, I see a zebra. Ah. Where haven't I looked yet? I guess over here. Ah. Okay, well. Tenth floor of the Ochre Quarry, and we start right next to this thing. Boom. <laughs> I love that sound effect of crunch. Oh man, everyone's picking up all these items. This is crazy. Whoa! Easy there, pal. Okay, let's see. Oh no you don't. Let's get rid of this thing first. <laughs> High Dragon just shrugs everything off. Oops. How could I miss a sleeping Pokemon? I mean, it's like, it's right there. How does that even miss? Blast Seed. Oh, stop it, you. Stop doing that. I don't want you to fight me. I hate you, Amoongus. Just like to paralyze me and do all this nasty stuff. Boom. No, we didn't need to do that. Whoa, what the heck? Whoa! Wow, Muddy Water's pretty beast. Does it really hit everything in the room? That's insane. Oh my goodness. Oh well, at least I'm resistant. stairs oh no you don't no no you can't just do that to the big high and mighty high dragon come on that's just rude he's too cool for that <coughs> all right oh man all right you're going down boom let's fight this thing Yeah, go get him. Hey, you can withdraw all you want, buddy. It's not gonna do you a lick of good. Ooh, sparkly. Wait. Oh no, he just put some stealth rocks on the ground. What a loser. They're so stealth, I can barely see them. I wonder what would happen if I went on one. Oh, that wasn't it. Oh, slow trap. Whoa! Huh, interesting. I just had to see. My curiosity was getting the better of me. Okay. 
Um, probably not the best idea. But, eh, whatever. Whoa! Oh, that sweet scent. It's just so sweet. Get it out of here, though. Oh, thankfully the Amoongas haven't been too bad this trip. <laughs> One hit, you're gone. Alright, let's get on out of here. 13th floor now. And, oh, well, I'll be. We're outside. Just have to go a little further, huh? Okay, I think we can do that. Let's fight this thing for good measure. Hey, you. Uh, let's Dragon Claw it. Ah. Uh. Ow, that actually hit pretty hard. Of course, you know, with that dragon, it's like, whatever, man. Sweet. Uh, yeah, let's go on ahead. Yeah, we made it through the Ochre Quarry. It's pretty good. Ah, <sighs> ah. It's gotten pretty dark. It must be almost nighttime. We've been walking a long while. It does take it out of you, doesn't it? There's no sign that we've been followed. Shall we stop here for the night? Sure, why not? Let's do it. Even when we're this far away, the moon and the stars look just the same as they do in paradise. What are everyone in Paradise and Post Towns doing now? I wonder if Broham's alright. If he makes it that far, he can get help from the others. I've got to do the same. I've got to make it back to Paradise. Tusks? Tusks, you... You must wish that you could go back to your home, don't you? But before you can do that, I'm afraid there is something I must ask you to do. Destroy the bitter cold. If you want to know why I should ask a human like you for help, Tusks, well, I'm afraid we didn't get to finish our conversation before, did we? I'll continue my explanation now, if I may. First of all, I must tell you, the truth is that I... I'm not your father. I mean, I'm not a Pokemon. What? A dragon's not a Pokemon? Ah, well, perhaps it's not entirely accurate to say that I'm not a Pokemon. As you can see, I've taken the form of a Pokemon, but it is only a temporary form. In fact, I am the voice of life. The voice of life? The voice of life is the voice of all of nature. Every last mountain, river, tree, and blade of grass in this world. It is an exclamation of joy and a cry of pain. I like how you can see his teeth. <laughs> On the, the 3D one up top. When all of those voices come together in a single united cry. Well, that's me. You crying? You crying, bro? Tusks. Right now, this world, the Pokemon world, is teetering on the verge of destruction. What? It is the bitter cold. A mysterious body that has suddenly appeared in our world. As it grows, it eats away at the heart of the world and drives it toward destruction. This world is being destroyed by this strange thing called the bitter cold? Tusks, you have, that is, the Maryland have, you've traveled to the Great Glacier from what I hear. Did you happen to see objects levitating in the air while you were there? That is the evidence of bitter cold's power. In other words, the bitter cold lies within the Glacier Palace. Uh-oh. It has the power to make objects around it float. Here, I thought it was just being cool. If I can, if it can do that, then the bitter cold is... The bitter cold must be... They're floating! The chunks of ice are floating in the air! That's not all. There are other things floating here and there. So then it's true. Looks that way. We can't just chalk it up to a baseless rumor anymore. A legendary great crystal that has only been a story up until now, but now that we've come here, it's finally starting to feel like it could be real. The great crystal that Umbreon sought out with such a fire in his heart. 
such a fire in his heart. Look at me trying to be all poetic. To think that it would be threatening the world with destruction. That it's actually this bitter cold High Dragon's talking about? My intention is to destroy the bitter cold and protect this world. But there is something standing in my way. The one who stands guard over the bitter cold, Kyurem. What? Kyurem? He didn't seem like that bad of a guy. Whoa. He's huge. Is he an enemy? That Kyurem is protecting the bitter cold? Kyurem is able to see into the future. And if there is anyone who dares to endanger that future, anyone who would oppose that future, is defeated without mercy. Stoutly defending the future that has been decided. That's what Kyurem does. That's what Kyurem is. Defending the future that has been decided? That's right. When we were in that palace, Kyurem himself said he had been watching over the future since days long gone and forgotten. So the future that Kyurem saw, it was the world ending. Even knowing that, Kyurem is trying to protect the future. A future of destruction. Muna and the other Pokemon who attacked you, Tusks. All of them work for Kyurem. Kyurem and his allies wish to bring this world to an end. Yet the many voices in this world, the voices of life, do not wish that. They are crying out for this world to be saved. And so I want to destroy the bitter cold, whatever it takes. But Kyurem is not the only problem. The bitter cold is actually a manifestation of the negativity of Pokemon. A dense fog formed of those negative emotions surrounds the bitter cold. And that is why, if a Pokemon gets too close to the bitter cold, its spirit will be overwhelmed by that negative power. A power so crushing that it is difficult even to breathe. Could that be back when we... Oh, and here I just thought I was a tough guy. Aren't we there yet? Why is everyone chickening out all of a sudden? So the reason why everyone is having such a hard time is because the Great Crystal, no, the Bitter Cold was near. That is why no Pokemon can destroy the Bitter Cold. And if not a Pokemon, then who? That's when I thought, perhaps a human. A human might not be affected by that Pokemon negativity. When I realized that, I began to broadcast my plea into the dreams of humans in an attempt to find our hope in the human world. And one of the humans that heard that plea and came to our world was you, Tusks. So that's what happened. I am one of the humans who... Huh, wait, I'm one of the humans who heard that plea? That is correct. You are not actually the only human in this world, Tusks. Many humans were able to hear the voice of life and come to this world as Pokemon. Just like you, Tusks. What? They were? Yes, they were. They should still be somewhere in this world. But those poor humans, they are also being hunted down by Kyurem and his allies, one by one. Muna lures them out, just as she did to you, and then defeats them utterly. Utterly. I'm afraid that you, you are the only one that I can depend on now, Tusks. Please, say you will help me. Please say you'll destroy the bitter cold. Um, sure, why not? Guess it seems okay. Hold on just a second, I have to think a little bit. Um, the bitter cold has to be destroyed or it's the end of this world. Someone has to do it. Someone has to stick it out to the end. So then, yeah, it might as well be me. Th thank you so much. We, you and I, together we will save the world somehow. Somehow indeed. Would you like to save the world? I mean, save your adventure? <laughs> Maybe I would. But anyway, that was pretty intense, huh? Looks like the plot has thickened indeed, just like a fog sweeping over the land. Bitter cold. Whoa. Anyway, I will see you on the next episode of Maryland's Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity Adventure. See you next time, Frostbite.